We're going to use RFI site to do some propagation analysis in the local area of our receivers. This propagation analysis is going to use the SRTM terrain data to calculate elevation. Um, we can use SRTM data or LIDAR data, but in this case it's SRTM. And we use the propagation analysis tools to look at uh, monitoring coverage, e.g. how much of an area can our receivers see for certain transmitter and receiver conditions and geolocation coverage, that is how many of our receivers can see the signal at any one time. We need at least three to do TDOA and at least two to do an AOA geolocation. So in our area we can add a propagation analysis tool and then we can come here and we can set some of the parameters to that. So for analyzer operation I'm just going to click off analyze on change so that we can make some changes without it constantly updating and then we just click analyze to update those parameters. So here we have receiver coverage. We have three modes we can work in. Receive power. So we work out the receive power for a transmitter roaming around the area around our, our receivers and we can calculate the receive power at each one of those transmitter positions. Receive coverage looks at the signal to noise ratio at each one of the uh, locations so that we can determine a signal to noise ratio for demodulation, signal to noise ratio for geolocation or just a plain old uh, signal to noise ratio so that we can at least see the signal and do some monitoring. And then receive account. This lets us calculate based on our signal to noise ratio requirements the number of receivers that can see any other receiver at any one time so that we can look at receive account. We need at least three receivers to see a given signal to make a TDO a geolocation and two for an AOA geolocation. So we're going to look at receive power first. Um, our transmitter is going to roam around this area to every pixel one meter above um, the local ground level um, at a frequency of one gigahertz, uh, transmit power of uh, 30 dBm uh, with an antenna with no gain and no direction, it's just a not dBi antenna. And our receive parameters are one megahertz, so we're looking around a one megahertz uh, bandwidth around the 1 gigahertz region to do the um, analysis which uh, which allows us to calculate our noise floor based on the noise figure of our receivers which could all be different so this tool takes that into account. So in this case we've calculated the received power and we have a heat map of received power from NEG 100 uh, dBm to NEG 35.1 which is the hot spots around here as the transmitter is roaming around. And we can change the various parameters on that so we can change the um, lower received power level to be much less than that uh, for the squelch um, and we can increase that so we can see as we increase the squelch level our coverage heat map reduces because this point here is neg 81 dBm in this case and our saturation level is neg 35 and we can change the properties of our heat map by changing the saturation level. So this allows us to see how the terrain is affecting the received power. So when the transmitter is here we can't see it. Uh, when it's here we can see uh, it at neg 81 dBm. So let's switch to receive coverage. So now receive coverage and see it's analyzing again. In this case we've got 0 dB. So this is a 0 dB signal to noise ratio. So if we want a 60 dB signal to noise ratio, that's our coverage. And as we go up in signal to noise ratio, we might want to do a demodulation, 22 dB. So we can see how the signal to noise ratio levels change as we as we sweep around the area. And we can see how local ground effects cause shadowing, um, shadowing behind uh, mountains, shadowing here. So this receiver may not be at its optimum position because we can see a significant shadow here. So if we go to receive count, then for the signal to noise ratio conditions we set up here for 25 dB signal to noise ratio then this is the received count. Green is uh, one receiver can see the area, transparent is obviously no receivers, yellow is one or more, red is three. Okay so one receiver, um, two receivers, three receivers. So we can see we can do TDOA in this area so may away geolocation in these other areas and then just plain monitoring in the other areas. So as a geolocation coverage 
we can see where our geolocation coverage is, where we can actually geolocate a signal. And that's at 25 dBs. As we lower that down in terms of required signal to noise ratio, we can see how that um, area changes. So that's all well and good. This area here, which is our propagation analysis area, gives us results for the data we see here. So in this case, we've got 15% of our area within this box can be covered with TDOA, e.g. three receivers, two receivers, 24%. Okay, so we can do AOA in 24 plus 15% in the yellow and red areas, and 18% of the area is only covered by one receiver, the green areas here. 43% uh, is not covered by anything at all. So we can change our positions to optimize these numbers based on geolocation or based on the squelch levels required in terms of receiver coverage or receiver power. Now this area might not represent the size of your base or your area you want to cover so I can add, in this case we can add regions and these are just general polygon regions which we can add to any of our analysis systems but in this case I've added this region here and I can change its shape I can add vertices um, to the shape in order to here we can control the shape and of this of this area and then I can recalculate and this could be the border area of our base I can recalculate so I get these percentage figures for this area. So if I click on to use statistical analysis region as that area, and then I rerun the analysis, then we get, for this region here, we get the parameters 59% for three receivers or more. So we can do 59% of the area, we can do TDOA, in 79% of the area we can do AOA and 12% of the area we can only do general monitoring and 9% of this area we can't see any um, of the receivers at all based on these transmission parameters. Now clearly these transmitted parameters will differ if we're looking for sky type objects like drones or UAVs then we can increase this to a minimum height and then we can rerun the analysis and see what those figures look like for the new analysis based on a much higher transmitter. And you can see here for the higher transmitter, the kind of performance we get if our minimum deck height for the transmitter is 25 meters, then we can do that type of geolocation there.